Hi everyone, so today is going to be a very unfunny and serious video. Some of you may even think this is boring, but it's a video that I definitely have to make. I don't like criticizing other vegans or vegan activists, but in this case, Joey Carbstrong definitely has to be held accountable for what he did. He helped to get Anonymous for the Voiceless, a very well-known animal activist organization, defunded. Now, the founders of this organization, AV, Anonymous for the Voiceless, Paul and Assal, they made a very long video breaking down all the details on what happened with Joey Carbstrong, how he helped to get their organization defunded. Now, I'm going to play you a very abridged, uh, edited down version of their video. Joey said to us, look, the donor has come to me and said he wants me to financially audit Anonymous for the Voiceless. Right. And I was saying, wait a second, Joey, can you tell us where this is coming from? Where exactly is the evidence that we aren't to be trusted financially? What is the accusation? Yeah. Oh, I can't tell you. That Joey wasn't just innocent in this. Like, he fully owned this as a reasonable request in his mind. Right. He thought yeah. that it was reasonable yeah. to be appointed as our financial auditor. auditor and there was some comments that he were, he was making that, that made it very we later obvious. realized you realized more sooner than I did that he had already placed value judgments into this scenario yes saying things like oh that's a lot of money that you're getting from the don't like oh, oh you're in yeah. a very privileged position to right. be receiving this amount of money as if that entire budget is going right into my pocket so let's communicate with the donor directly instead of talking through Joey Carbstrong. So we went back to the donor and the donor said, I don't want any part of this anymore. You have to deal with Joey Carbstrong. Yeah. Shafted us. Dismissed us. Okay. And then what we decided, what we seem to find um, reasonable as a reasonable solution, solution was we will get a uh, accountant involved here. We even said not our regular accounting No, a third firm. party. Yeah. A third party accountant yeah. who will provide a financial report. And he thought that that sounded reasonable. Yeah, Initially, he said, that's great. He said I okay, think that's the best. I think that's the best thing. Yeah. So he then went back to the donor to tell the donor that we said this on the call and yes. that you know, this seemed like the most reasonable solution. On the third call, Joey comes back to us. I'm on the call. You're not. Mm -hmm. Comes back to us. And says, that's not good enough. What I need from you is your bank login. Your username. For your, your internet password, login. For your bank so I can access all of AV's banking information. You can't just share your bank account login with people. What we later or pointed out. Or your credit out, card number with what, people. What we later pointed out is that not only is this an unethical request, it's actually it's actually illegal. It's illegal. And it's extremely unprofessional. Now, again, Joey had not only doubled but tripled down on this mm -hmm. at this point, that this is the best solution, that this is the most appropriate way to manage a... Uh, a or need for financial transparency yeah. with us. And of course, Paul and Assal denied this ridiculous and highly illegal request to give Joey Carbstrong their bank account logins and passwords. And as a result, uh, the donor pulled out. He won't fund Anonymous for the Voiceless anymore, so their funding is massively uh, cut back. And Joey Carbstrong is at least partly responsible for this. He's a He played a big role in all of this happening. And Joey, I have to ask, why would you get involved in this whole situation in the first place? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Joey actually receives funding from the same donor, and it's quite clear that he was pressured by this donor to get involved in this whole situation. But Joey, when someone asks you to financially audit someone else, when you have absolutely no accounting skills, no degrees in any of this, why would you agree to it? Like, no offense, dude, but I wouldn't trust you to give me correct change at a convenience store. So the idea that you think it was appropriate for you to financially audit Anonymous for the Voiceless uh, is just insane and delusional. And on top of that, you supported all of this bullcrap. You never stood up for AV and told anyone 
this is wrong, this is stupid, we shouldn't be doing this, some of these things are illegal, like asking for bank account logins and passwords. No, not only were you complacent in everything, but you supported all of these decisions. You doubled down and said, yeah, this is reasonable, asking for illegal information, bank account logins and passwords, and you helped to defend, uh, defund Anonymous for the Voiceless. And Joey uh, only proves this further in a, a stupid Facebook and Instagram post he made, and he came up with a, a bunch of slimy, disgusting, weaselly lies that we're going to debunk right now. So Joey starts off by saying, the following is a statement in response to the recent situation with Anonymous for the Voiceless, AV. Firstly, I want to address the claim made by Paul Nassal, AV, that I sent out to cancel AV. This accusation is damaging and untrue. I've collaborated and promoted AV across my channels from day one. I've had an AV link in my YouTube channel for years, and I had a segment on AV outreach in nearly all of my speeches encouraging activists to join. Yeah, so Joey, this is just a complete load of bullcrap, and I'd even say you're lying. Nothing you just said had anything to do with what happened between you, AV, the donor. You're just trying to manipulate people into thinking, oh no, Joey Carbstrong supports AV. There's no way he played a role in getting them defunded when, no, Joey, it's quite clear that you did in fact help get them defunded. Uh, not only did you get involved in the situation in the first place when you had no business in doing so, but on top of that, you supported all of these attacks against AV. You supported this idea that they are untrustworthy, they're spending their money frivolously, just on themselves, pocketing the money, and you even went along with these stupid ideas like trying to trick them into giving away their bank account logins and passwords, even though that's illegal, and you, you made this post to support and double down on all of the stupid crap. Later in your post, you even accused AV of being dishonest, untrustworthy, you even called them rude, obnoxious people. Like, a like Joey, you call this supporting AV? You're a goddamn liar. What happened was a major donor had concerns with AV and the relationship between this donor and Paul Nassau was breaking down. This came to a head after AV published a controversial Black Lives Matter protest post, which upset many people and resulted in a number of complaints to AV's donor. This was compounded by other concerns, including AV groups not receiving funding from Paul and Assal. So again, Joey, you're supporting this idea that Paul and Assal are just pocketing this donation money for their own benefit, even though you have absolutely no evidence for this claim. They even agreed to have a third party professional financial audit done, which you failed to mention, and they even addressed this accusation in their original video. So one of the claims that people were making against us from the emails that this donor was receiving was that with the AV fund, anyone who doesn't know what the AV fund is, we dedicated a huge amount of money per year to support our chapters. So we would send money to roughly about 20 chapters per month before this coronavirus thing started. And um, we had different tiers. People just needed to be eligible to apply for it. If they were, they would receive it. We would send them the money and that's it. And that money would help them buy equipment or whatever they needed. So this has been going on for over a year now. Mm -hmm. We had the AV fund in place. So this person, the donor was saying, these people are claiming that they used to be an AV organizer. They never received the AV fund. And they are saying nobody ever received the AV fund. It was just becoming about how AV takes all the money and even the budget for the AV fund and doesn't help chapters, which is bullshit. And we do have proof for this. So one thing that the donor brought up was, how much are you sending to the chapters? And we're like, this much, mm -hmm. all up, yeah, this much per year. And they said, oh, that's nothing compared to your budget. Sure, because we're an international organization. We've got 30 people working for AV, including ourselves. And yeah. we've got all these other costs. We've got a huge campaigns we're working on. And you agreed to, bud to the budget for each one of those campaigns. Yes. Right? So now, why are you going back on your own words all of a sudden? Like, you just signed the, the contract, like, without even looking at it. That's what it seemed like. So, Joey, they've already addressed these accusations. You're well aware of this, yet you're still perpetuating these lies in your stupid Facebook and Instagram post. They have a specific budget for sending out money to their separate chapters. 
Only certain chapters qualify for that money, and they can prove that that money in their budget is getting sent out to the chapters that qualify. Again, you're leaving out the fact that they were totally willing to do a third-party financial audit for you, and you're just coming up with a slide, where's the money go? Oh, it must be going right into their pocket. You're a goddamn liar, Joey. Why the hell are you doing this? After much consideration, the donor reached out to me to help try to resolve the matter. As a friend of the donor, I was asked to be involved because I had no ill feelings towards AV and in fact had been a longtime friend and supporter of their work. Furthermore, I have experience and understanding with grassroots activism on the ground. The goal is to help AV continue to receive their funding and work with them in fulfilling the donor's request for financial transparency. Although I was a little taken back by this request to get involved, I assumed that as a nonprofit organization, they would be open, honest, and compliant to regain the trust of the donor. Yeah, so Joey, this is just more complete bull and you are lying by omission. Why aren't you admitting that Paul and Asal were willing to give you a third-party financial audit? Um, you left that out of this paragraph for some reason. Gee, it's almost as if you are a lying, slimy turd who's trying to, you know, give everyone this idea that, yeah, Paul and Asal are lying. They're trying to hide something. They're pocketing all this donation money. Joey, where's the evidence? Why won't you admit what's actually going on? Why are you completely full of so I'm just going to skip over this paragraph here. It's just unimportant. The main financial concerns included the breakdown in salary costs, 946000 a year. The AV fund, 360000 which a number of AV groups said they hadn't received. We've already covered this. Paul and Asal already addressed this accusation, but for some reason, Joey keeps bringing this up as if it hasn't already been addressed. The high cost of developing an app, 150000 Australian, and a large touring campaign budget. 300,000 in a year when travel was restricted due to COVID. They also never readjusted the travel budget to suit the current situation of all travel being restricted. Okay, so Paul and Asal addressed all of these accusations in a follow-up response. Uh, most of this just comes down to Joey being an ignorant moron, not understanding how expensive certain things are, how expensive it is to have employees, develop apps, things like that. And as we've just seen, Joey is even repeating things that have already been disproved, these lies and accusations that they're just pocketing the money, but for some reason, Joey just keeps perpetuating these lies. Um, so I do want to cover the one accusation that they didn't adjust their uh, travel expenses for the year. Uh, again, I'll, I'll just play the clip. So the next thing Joey mentioned was the tour and campaign uh, budget. He mentioned 300000 a year in a year when travel was restricted because of COVID. They also never readjusted this travel budget to suit the current situation of all travel being restricted. So yes, the budget that we asked for was 300000 for an entire year of four and five. So it was going to be between four and five people traveling full time for a whole year. And... That was based on the fact that we were going to take off in February or March this year. Obviously, this was affected by COVID. And the reason why it wasn't readjusted was because we thought nobody knew how this is going to turn out. Nobody had any idea how long this is going to take. I mean, it's been exactly what, like over six months now, and it might continue until the end of the year, but nobody Even knew. Even next year. Nobody knew this. So we thought, oh, it's going to take maybe another month or two, and then we're going to come out of the lockdown and we can start traveling. Yeah, so, we kept making plans to return to the tour yeah. every other week. We're like, right, we're going back on tour at this time. Yeah, at this so time. we thought, we, we were even thinking, we're, where are we going to be for International Cube Day, which is in November, but it seems like we don't even know if we're going to be able to do cubes here in Melbourne. So nobody knew because it's a unique situation. And that's why we didn't reach out to the donor to readjust the budget. We thought if the donor is happy to continue to send us what we agreed on, obviously that's going to be put aside for when we are able to start traveling and touring again. So Joey, if you or the donor were concerned, like what's going to happen to this, you know, travel budget, you could have asked, why did you make a Facebook and Instagram post suggesting that they're literally just pocketing $300,000 of this donation money that was intended for travel? Why would you assume that? Where's the evidence that they're just pocketing all of this money? They offered to give you a third party financial audit which again, you're not mentioning in this stupid post and you're giving people the idea that they're literally pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars. You are a weasel. Why are you doing the slimy, disgusting
Operationally, there were also concerns with Asala being the only treasurer and her handling of all the funds and payroll for the founder to have sole responsibility of these functions and an organization of the of the size and income. It did raise concerns and is not best practice for demonstrating strong financial controls. In most charities, there is an independent board of trustees who oversee the organization's operations and financial stability. This is not the case with AV and where there is a lack of financial accountability and all funds are received and distributed by Paul and Asal as they see fit with no oversight by anyone else in the organization. So again, Joey is trying to spread this idea that Paul and Asal are untrustworthy. Yeah, they're probably just pocketing the money, even though he has absolutely no evidence of this. And again, he's leaving out the fact that they were perfectly willing to have a third party financial audit. Weird how you keep leaving that important detail out of all these paragraphs, Joey. Uh, but anyway, Paul and Asal made a response to this. Again, I'll just play the clip. There is a lack of financial accountability and all funds are received and distributed by Paul and Asal as they see fit with no oversight by anyone else in the organization. There's various so points. There. There's a lot to there, unpack right? there. So let's start from the beginning. Yeah. So first of all, he suddenly says in this statement, there were concerns about me being the only treasurer. That this was is never the first time. Yeah, that was never mentioned. Second of all, why? What's the issue with Asal specifically? Who else is more trustworthy, more professional, more organized? Have you done any research into what you're talking about, Joey? I know you didn't even write that, by the way. What exactly is the issue since you're now claiming these words are your own? Because I'm, I'm saying you didn't write that. I know you didn't write that. But we have to assume he did and that he's, a, he's still accountable for those words. So I want to hear an explanation for why Asal is not the person to be our treasurer. Also, this notion that Asal is dealing with the money by herself is completely insane when she deals with, she works very closely with bookkeepers and a team of accountants. So all the financial affairs are managed by Asal and those people, not just Asal. Also, again, who exactly is more trustworthy, more professional, more organized, more suited to be in that position than Asal? Someone who started the organization, who would never try to fuck over the organization. Apparently, and the last point that was mentioned, we're supposed to have a board of directors, a board, trustees. he says. A board of trustees is something that you have set up with a different structure than we do. If you were paying attention at all to how AV was structured from the beginning, you'd know that Asal and I have been running AV and we do have it structured this way. We don't have a board. And this is why I know that you didn't say this. Because Matthew and the others were pushing for a board. And the fact that you can't see what that means is so fucking crazy to me. It's obvious that the board is designed to push me and Asal out of the way things are operated within AV. In other words, they're trying to control AV. They're trying to take over the way that we do things and run it differently. So this is what you're supporting, Joey. The notion that we should have a board which would completely make us intersectional, welfareist, and focusing on absolute nonsense compared to what we do now, which is holding people accountable for why they stab animals to death with no reason, targeting the demand. It would no longer be that. The screens would show different stuff. There wouldn't be graphic imagery. We would have food served at our events. Is that what you're behind, Joey? So again, Joey, you're just promoting absolute bullshit lies. There's a reason why they structure the organization the way they do, and you have not provided any evidence that they cannot be trusted. Again, you're neglecting to mention that they offered to give you a third party financial audit and you're just ask, acting like, oh yeah, they're secretive, they're hiding things, they're pocketing the money, they can't be trusted. You're full of shit, Joey. After back and forth deliberation with AV and the donor, Paul Nassau refused to give the type of transparency the donor was requesting. So if anything in this entire document proves you're a lying weasel, it's this. 
Notice how Joey isn't admitting that he was asking for their bank account logins and passwords. Instead, he said, Paul and Asal weren't willing to give us the transparency that was needed. They weren't being transparent and honest. Uh, no, Joey, they were being perfectly transparent and honest with you. You're the one being a lying weasel, and again, lying by omission, trying to paint this as if, oh, Paul and Asal are just trying to hide things because they're just pocketing the money. Uh, no, Joey, they just don't want to give you their bank account logins and passwords because that's stupid, dangerous, and illegal, you lying weasel. We had the support of a professional professional accountant, so I wouldn't have been on my own, as has been suggested. The fact that Paul and Asal claimed they wouldn't give the donor access to their charity accounts because they had their personal accounts linked with them is strange, and after consulting with a professional, is extremely out of the ordinary. So this is just more bullshit. Uh, so first of all, Joey's saying that there was an accountant involved that would have helped him. Why were you involved in this situation at all? It still doesn't make any sense, and again, you're still neglecting to mention that Paul and Asal offered to have a third-party audit done. You keep admitting that to paint this picture that they're dishonest and they're trying to hide things. And secondly, you mention, like, again, you still don't mention that you're asking for their bank account logins and passwords. So now you're saying the donor just wanted access to their charity account. You're not admitting that you were asking for their bank account logins and passwords which is illegal. So again, you're just being completely dishonest here. And I don't know how you think online banking works, Joey. For a single login, you have access to all of your banking accounts. I have a checking account, a savings account, a credit, uh, a credit card, and a line of credit. I have access to all of those accounts on a single login. And if I added other accounts, like a business account, I would also have access to that account on a single login. What is... Like, are you stupid? What what professional did you talk to who said this is highly unusual? This is how online banking works, you moron. So again, I'm gonna skip this paragraph because he basically makes the same arguments in this paragraph. They also claim to me in one of our calls that although they might have needed the donor at the beginning, they don't necessarily need them anymore and they could go on without them. This didn't make any sense as they, as they had so many staff, they uh, say they have 30 and no reserve funds yet. They would rather let go of their main source of funding instead of giving the donor the transparency they were looking for. So notice again, he won't admit that they were asking for bank account logins and passwords. He's just saying they weren't being transparent and honest. Very dishonest way of painting things. Uh, this did raise alarm bells with me as it seemed they would rather lose 1.5 million USD a year than comply with the donor's request, essentially defunding the whole AV. And he won't actually admit what the donor's request is. Again, he's just lying. So notice how Joey keeps doing this. He won't admit that he was asking for their bank account logins and passwords, and instead he keeps going on about transparency. Paul and Asal aren't transparent. They weren't being transparent. They weren't giving us the transparency that we needed. When no, they were being perfectly transparent. It's just that they weren't stupid enough to give you their bank account logins and passwords. And it's funny how Joey is being so hypocritical here, talking about transparency, when dude, you had your Patreon hidden for the longest time. You were hiding how much money you were making on Patreon until Paul and, uh, Paul and Asal exposed you. But don't come at us like we're lacking transparency here when your Patreon doesn't even show how much money you receive. Right. You've got that blocked. And yet we're expected to give over our bank login. And then after he got exposed for this hypocrisy, Joey finally decided to show how much he's earning on Patreon. It's funny how you keep lying about Paul and Asal claiming they're untrustworthy and they're trying to hide things, but you've been the only one trying to hide things here, Joey. This money the donor gives is for the animals, and if they're not 100% confident in where the funding is going and they have the right to stop funding, as does anyone, the donor has never defunded an organization like this before, so the circumstances were unique. AV were reluctant to take suggestions from the donor, showed arrogance, and spoke with contempt towards almost all involved. I agree with that, Joey, that yes, if the donor doesn't feel comfortable with donating to a particular organization, he doesn't have to, he can do whatever he wants with the money. The issue here is that you're lying. You are spreading lies about Paul and Asal and AV that are incredibly damaging not only to the organization, but Paul and Asal personally. You are provably completely full of also, for them to compare my Patreon, my YouTube, and rather modest amounts I receive from my donor to help with a few staff, two full-time staff, and some occasional freelancers, and travel when needed, to an organization with a 2.2 million Australian dollar uh, per year income. They actually weren't making that much money per year, that was just the expected budget for this year. Is nowhere near comparable and extremely misleading on their part as a public charity with one major donor 
It should not come as a surprise to be expected to provide this kind of transparency. If you refuse and your funding is cut by the donor, I'm sorry, but that's not my fault. This is getting really tiring, so Joey is just repeating this exact same lie instead of admitting that he was asking for their bank account logins and passwords again. He's just saying, oh, well, they weren't being transparent. This sort of transparency is expected. Well, Joey, if this sort of transparency is expected, giving somebody their bank account login and password, Give it to me. Give me your bank account login and password. I want to see how much money you make off of YouTube, how much money you make off of Patreon, how much money you make off your donor, uh, t-shirt sales. Uh, I know you have a PayPal. So give me your bank account login and password. I'll look through all of your accounts. I'll see where all of your money is going, how you spend it, how much is going to you personally, how much is being spent on business related expenses. This sort of transparency is expected. Well, then give it to me, dude. Paul and Asal have made some incredibly damaging claims about my intentions when I was just trying to help them when no one else would. Okay, so for all of you watching, uh, tell me, do you think Joey was being helpful here? Do you think Joey was being helpful when he was completely complacent in the situation, uh, not helping to defend AV or Paul and Asal? Uh, was he being helpful when he was supporting all these lies and misinformation being spread about them, uh, supporting the donor and his ridiculous demands to see their bank account login and passwords. Uh, do you think he's being helpful here by making this post where he's spreading more lies and misinformation, a lot of which he knows is untrue? Is that being helpful? And what really puts the cherry on top, which really makes me know for sure that Joey is being a slimeball piece of sh is that at the end of this document, he said, this will be my final statement on the matter as I need to focus my efforts on the animals. Joey, you just don't want to take accountability. You don't want to take accountability for helping to defund AV and for spreading these lies and misinformation about Paul and Asal. And look, I've tried to reach out to Joey and try to get this, uh, you know, thing resolved between him and Paul and Asal. I wanted to set up a live discussion between Joey and them and uh, have me moderate. But Joey declined, and I think that's for obvious reasons. He doesn't want to take accountability for what he did, for spreading lies and misinformation, for not only being complacent in all of this, but supporting all of these attacks against Paul and Assal and helping to get them defunded. This sort of behavior is absolutely pathetic. I'm super disappointed in Joey. I hope in the future he grows up, grows some balls, and just admits that he does something wrong and apologizes, or at the very least, Defend himself in a live discussion. Clearly, this is a very important issue. One of the largest animal rights organizations has gotten massively defunded, and Joey's saying, oh, I have to focus on helping the animals. Were you helping the animals in this situation, Joey? So, this is ridiculous. Uh, Joey, either own up to what you did, apologize, or come on a live stream with Paul and Asal and I. We'll work out our differences and try to get this sorted out, but this is just you running away, not taking accountability for what you did. And I have an announcement. I just started working with the online vegan pet food retailer Vigor. They are based out of Montreal, but you can uh, order from them online. And we feed our kitty Prismo some vegan cat food. So if you want to uh, feed your cat vegan, then uh, check out Vigor. We like to feed him the Evolution Max Life pet food. That works really well for him. And look at him. He is an absolute unit of a cat. So uh, check out Vigor if you want some uh, good vegan pet food for cats or dogs. And uh, you can get a discount by uh, clicking my affiliate link in the description, and you can also get 10% off by using the discount code also in the description. And if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me through Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store. And if you're looking for online coaching, then check out Quality Gains. He offers customized meal and training programs. And if you click the link in the description, you can get a free ebook. And also check out my wife's OnlyFans. She's hot as hell. She has full nude. So if you're into that sort of thing, check out her OnlyFans. I also have my own OnlyFans. So if you want to see me naked, you want to see my pee pee, or if you just want to chat about whatever, then check out my OnlyFans. And as always, keep making those vegan and support other vegan activist gains. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.